In the olden days, there was a very cool device we called Greek Fire. It really looks like a medieval flamethrower or a grenade, but we still have trouble understanding how exactly it did work. When all the tests are being done and the research is conducted, it's still a mystery. The ancient mystery of this fire thing still sounds like a puzzle to me, even though people write about it in a lot of articles and videos. How about we try to find out what exactly was this fire from the past and what we know and don't know about it. In the 670s, the Umayyad Caliphate shifted to the Byzantine territories, the bases of which were established along the Mediterranean coast from Syria to the Aegean Sea. They aimed to attack Constantinople, leading Byzantine Emperor Constantine IV to prepare his fleet. Some of his ships had a new weapon, a liquid shot from nozzles that created flames burning on water and surfaces. Despite this, Constantine initially couldn't stop the Umayyad advance. The Umayyads attacked Constantinople and occupied it for four years, from 674 to 678, but in winter 677 or 678, the Byzantine fleet, loaded with Greek fire, defeated the Umayyad fleet and ended the siege. It was the first recorded use of Greek fire in the sea war. The term usually refers to Byzantine ship weapons, but Kelly de Vries notes three types in primary sources. A flammable liquid, a flammable liquid weapon in grenades, and a solid incendiary weapon in Western Europe from the 14th century. In fact, the name Byzantine in Arabian was not a good description because these weapons had nothing in common with Byzantine and Arabian. Western chroniclers often call by the name Ignis Grescus or Greek fire anything that was hurled at the enemy, which could be set on fire. There are various conspiracy theories about the origin of Greek fire, which dates back to the Byzantine era. Attributed to Kalinikos of Heliopolis, the Byzantine architect and chemist in the 7th century, he may have been inspired by earlier flammable weapons and may have worked with other chemists in Constantinople, inheriting discoveries from Alexandrian chemical school. It is likely that the Greeks' fire secrets are lost due to two main problems. Firstly, it was a horrible weapon and tales about its devastation turned into a myth more than a fact. Second, just as the Byzantine rulers like Constantine Porphyrogenitus used to keep the details of the state as secrets. He forbade his son to divulge the recipe to infidels and in other places but in the imperial capital. Notwithstanding the attempt to mask the secret, the rivals and the modern historians have made a great attempt to reproduce the weapon. The riddle of the lost formula has perplexed scholars. In the 19th century, the proper method was to use a liquid with saltpeter, a substance similar to gunpowder. Already in 1960, the British chemist James Reddick Partington suggested it was manufactured from natural petroleum, most likely by distilling. This could lead to the creation of a full-blown fuel, which would serve as a modern-day flamethrower. However, it is unclear if the technology was available to do this in the year 1900. The usage of nephatha, a crude oil fraction, is considered a viable option and it may be thickened with raisins and mixed with other components. These experiments prove that such a fuel mixture, if heated to 60 degrees Celsius, could be used as fuel that is fed into a pump. However, this does not disprove the Roman theory, and the lack of a detailed recipe makes it hard to understand how this weapon was made. The Byzantine Greek fire was a complex weapon system fitted on their dromons, the warships. Based on the description of the bronze siphon by Leo VI, the tool employed to deliver the liquid was placed at the front of the ship and the prow. Above the siphon, the platform was made of planks and the entire thing was surrounded by more planks to keep the prepared fire from reaching the enemy. Via the 11th century account of Angwar, the far-traveled who reportedly encountered similar weapons on ships, as described in the Angwar saga. The ships were equipped with smith's bellows to blow fire from a furnace with a brass or bronze tube produced flames, burning the ship to its white ashes. Nevertheless, the manner of the functioning of the device is still a mystery, though scholars including John Heldon and Maurice Byrne have given plausible explanations for it. Estimations show that it could have been as much as 15 meters long, but the heated liquid tank was a danger because of the possibility of the liquid tank exploding. The ships that are mentioned in the primary sources can have up to two, three, or even four of these complicated devices. 
running them was so complicated that it needed a number of people, each an expert in one compartment, to keep the weapon a secret. The kind of great fire was rarely used particularly in naval confrontations. In the year 727, Leo III, the Emperor, launched an expedition to the Cyclades in order to demolish the Hellas and Cyclades rebel fleet. In 941, the Byzantines managed to eradicate a Rus fleet which was marching from Kiev through the Black Sea. The Greek fire can be encountered in the primary sources only occasionally. However, this weapon was rarely used in practice. As per the historian Kelly DeVry's viewpoints, this rarity might be due to the risk that can be involved in using this weapon, especially on wooden ships where fire was such a big threat. In other words, the use of Greek fire was probably selective with the wind and currents favorable to avoid unintended outcomes. Even unusual uses of land are documented by the historians John Pryor and Elizabeth Jeffreys. The ancient engineer Heron of Byzantium's Perengelmata, Paul or Setika, a book on siege warfare, provides an example of this. This book has a sketch, according to historians, that depicts a warrior firing at a wall from a siege tower using a portable fire weapon known as a chirisiphon. There are similar problems with the second kind of Greek fire. Its composition was presumably not all that different from that of the mixer employed in the Byzantine flamethrowers. However, the way it was weaponized was different. It was launched by hand or with a catapult of some kind into grenade-shaped containers, the majority of which were ceramic. The Muslim empires were the main users of this kind of weapon, but Byzantine land troops also employed it starting in the middle of the 10th century. Interestingly though, it occurred significantly more frequently than the first form of Greek fire. To give you an idea, 20,000 barrels of this combustible liquid were used to burn Cairo in 1168 to keep the crusader king al Marek from taking Egypt, according to one of the several documented sources. The numerous vessel fragments that have been discovered scattered over the Middle East and Western Asia are a much more reliable sign of how broadly it was utilized. INF, when the Crusaders experienced this weapon for the first time in the 12th century, they were taken aback. The French historian Jean de Joinville provides a fairly detailed narrative in his book Life of St. Louis. He tells how, in 1250, when the Crusaders of the Seventh Crusade attempted to bridge the Damietta branch of the Nile in order to assault El Mansura, the Saracens greeted them with Greek fire. The Saracens on the other side of the canal moved catapults forward as the Crusaders attempted to bridge it by erecting a dam. The Greek fire grenades that these robots launched toward makeshift shelters where the workers were being shielded caught fire. According to the French chronicler, it made a noise as it approached it resembled the thunder of heaven, and the flames trailed after it was as large as a large spear. It appeared to be soaring through the skies like a dragon. Because of the massive amount of fire and the brilliant light it released, it threw such a brilliant light that it appeared to be daytime across the camp. The Crusaders then gave up on their strategy and withdrew. Why did Europeans not accept this technology is a question. The most likely explanation is that they were short in supplies. In Central Europe, petroleum-like products were extremely hard to come by. Thus, even though they had heard of Greek fire by the time of the Crusades at the latest, they were unable to experience it, at least not in large quantities. This is why with the invention of gunpowder, incendiaries actually only started to play a role in the arsenals of Central Europe. Overall, our knowledge about Greek fire is somewhat limited. It was unquestionably a highly powerful and efficient weapon, even if it was undoubtedly not exactly the same as hand grenades or flamethrowers. But the Byzantines were excellent at hiding their military technology, as evidenced by the fact that its origin, composition, and many specifics about its application are still a mystery. And even now, some people presumably read too much into the accounts of its terrible impacts, oblivious to the reality that the sources actually just provide us with a lot of conflicting and incomplete information.